Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to talk about how to strengthen your digestive system, all right? So pay attention, listen up close. Hey, what's up guys? Hope you guys having a great day today. So today I'm going to talk about how to strengthen your digestive system, all right? So if you're having, you know, those bloating issues, constipation, you're feeling nausea, you know, uh, having, uh, struggling with IBS, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how you can strengthen your digestive system and overcome those, uh, issues and obstacles, all right? So pay attention and listen up close. But before I dive into this topic, be sure and subscribe to my channel. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button so you can get notified when I upload more content to the channel, all right? So, first things first, we're going to talk about the cause, you know, we're going to talk about the main two causes of a weak digestive system, all right? So, if you have a weak digestive system, then normally there's two main causes, all right? The first one is high levels of inflammation, and the second level, the second thing is Poor management of fiber, usually coming from a fiber overload. I call it a fiber overload, which means consuming too much fiber and you die. All right. Now, when you have high levels of inflammation in your stomach, then the reason this this can be an issue is because you have something in your stomach lining called mucosa. All right. And mucosa is moist tissue that lines certain parts of your body. And it, it also lines your stomach as well. And it secretes the mucus in your body and it also helps you know push the nutrients from the food break down your food push the nutrients from your food through your digestive system so it can get in your digestive tract getting your di getting your uh getting your bloodstream all right down your digestive tract so so um this is important because a lot of times when when that high level those high levels of inflammation they affect your digestive tract and they affect the mucosa balance of the mucosa lining in uh, the mucosa in your stomach lining. All right, that's responsible for helping to break down and digest your food. Right. So what happens is when those when your inflammation is high in your gut and in your stomach, then two things can happen. It can cause erosion of that mucosa in your stomach lining. All right, or it can just be high levels of inflammation that don't cause erosion of the stomach lining. But like I said, it affects the way the mucosa, you know, the uh, it affects the mucosa levels in your body and the food being able to get through your digestive tract. Because your digestive system, this, the mucosa in your stomach lining is the main thing that has to have the right balance. It's all about balance of that mucosa in your stomach lining. If that's off, and out of balance, then your body won't break down the food and get in your digestive tract, which will cause, you know, those, you know, those issues that I named earlier, right? The bloating, the nausea, you know, uh, IBS, abdominal pain and discomfort in your belly, right? Now, what can cause the inflammation? Where does the inflammation come from, all right? It's usually a few things. It's alcohol, you know, smoking, uh stress from illnesses, unhealthy, consuming too many unhealthy foods, and corticosteroids as well. So certain pharmaceutical medications and steroids can also have been known to cause, uh, cause inflammation uh, and erosion in your stomach lining, all right? So that, that, that is an important part of having a strong digestive system is monitoring, making sure that your inflammation levels stay relatively low. And you don't, you know, they don't get too high where they start throwing off the uh, the mucosa and your stomach lining so your body can digest the food and can get in your bloodstream, right? Now, if, you know, if your inflammation levels is high 
and you're having this, you know, your mucosa is out of balance in your stomach lining, then you will have these problems. Your primary, you know, you'll start having these issues, you know, bloating. It'll cause you, you, you to feel bloated a lot, you know, feeling nausea, nausea a lot, you know, feeling extra full after meals for a long period of time because that's just not normal. That's not natural. You know, you'll start having abdominal pain and discomfort in your belly. You know, you might have IBS issues. You know, your rhythm, the rhythm of your digestive system is just, it'll just throw your whole rhythm off, you know, and out of whack, right? So we got to get you back. You know, you got to get back on rhythm and get the right rhythm in your digestive, you know, in your digestive system by keeping those inflammation levels down so that mucosa can do what it needs to do in your stomach lining and you can have a strong stomach lining, you know, for your, uh, you know, when you consume your food so the, the food can break down in your stomach and get absorbed in your bloodstream and through your digestive tract. All right. Now, that's that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is, you know, fiber, like I said earlier, fiber, poor management of fiber in your diet. Usually the most the most common mistake that I've seen over the years is an oh, fiber. People have a fiber overload, which means they consume too much fiber. Because it's a misconception that fiber is a nutri like fiber has nutritional value. You know, a lot of people think that, but it doesn't. Fiber is just responsible for adding bulkiness to your diet, which, if the balance is right, can help, you know, push that food through your digestive tract. You know, um, so that's what fiber is, is adding bulkiness to your diet. You know, it, it's really not it's not a nutrient. It has no nutritional value, but, you know. That's just what it is. So what happened, what happens is when you have when you have too much fiber in your diet, which is that bulkiness, then it causes your stomach to expand, which then makes it harder for that food to, to go through your digestive uh, to, through your digestive tract because you're so bloated from that expansion of your stomach from all the fiber. Right. So. Um. That alone can cause you to feel bloated, you know, feeling, uh, having IBS issues. You might have irregular bowel movements, inconsistent bowel movements, feel extra full after meals for a long period of time. And that's important because, and also abdominal pain and discomfort as well. So the two, those two primary issues can cause, those two things uh, can cause essentially the same symptoms with your digestive system, right? So, um, because what's not normal is you to eat food and then you to be full five, six, seven hours, you know, after you've ate, that's a dead giveaway that you've had too much fiber in your diet and your food's not breaking down, right? Or too much fiber in that meal and your food's not breaking down, right? Now, a lot of people make that mistake when they try to eat healthy and they try to do a lot of fruits and vegetables, but they're not understanding how much fiber is in the fruits and the vegetables that, you know, you eat, they eat. So that could be a it's it's a common mistake that a lot of people make is getting too many fruits and vegetables that are high that have a high fiber content, you know, in those fruits and vegetables. So they're just combining the wrong. It's just uh, it's just a combination of the wrong food, you know, that's causing the fiber overload. Right. So, you know, when you address those two issues, those are normally the two causes of having a weak digestive system. Right. And cause you the all those. You know, those primary digestive issues that I just named. Now, a solution to solving those issues are, you know, having an anti-inflammatory diet. But having an anti-inflammatory diet, consuming an anti-inflammatory diet with the right balance, the right nutritional balance where, you know, your fiber content is balanced right. You know, you're getting enough greens in your diet, raw greens to break down your food um, because greens are are a good detoxer, you know, they're, they're good for detoxing your gut and, and getting that, uh, and, and breaking down your food and getting and help pushing that food through your digestive system. They also help with the mucosa levels in your stomach lining. They help strengthen the mucosa levels in your stomach lining. So, you know, get plenty of greens, leafy green vegetables in your diet that are low in fiber and high in nutritional value. All right. A couple of a few of them that I can name off the top of my head is my a couple of my favorite ones are organic spinach, romaine lettuce, you know, bok choy, you know, uh, things like that that are low in fiber but high in nutritional value, right? So 
that's one thing that you can do to help strengthen your digestive system and your stomach lining and keep your inflammation levels down and decrease the uh and decrease the the bloating and the discomfort uh and making sure that you don't have that fiber overload so that can that you can actually kill two birds with one stone is by adding more green leafy green vegetables in your diet now that now you also also want to remove some things from your diet like i said the alcohol smoking you know uh the other unhealthy foods that are in your diet you know you want to remove those as well and still have a clean diet you know you don't you can't eat unhealthy you know drink a whole bunch of alcohol smoke take all you know take all these uh uh medicines and think that the greens are going to just miraculously fix those issues no you got to do both you have to remove you know certain things from your regimen and then you add you know the greens to your regimen as well to help you know go ahead cleanse your body detox those those toxins and that inflammation you know out of your body right now considering you have autoimmune disease you know the autoimmune disease is known to uh to to consume some of those healthy healthy uh cells in your body you know in your digestive tract so but you can you can manage that there's a way to manage that just keep just keep feeding your body keep detoxing your body because you can eventually you know your body your body will start to change and the ph level of your body will start to change slowly but surely if you continue to you know push those greens and detox your body you know put them in that gut you know eventually the balance will get back right in your body and you know you'll feel the difference in your digestive tract even if you have an autoimmune disease right so don't like don't let that you know discourage you it just because you have an autoimmune disease that you know your body is known to attack the good cells in your body because there's it's just a, it's just your ph balance is off so you have to get your ph balance body you, the ph level in your body back right where you know you got more good blood cells in your body you got more antioxidants more vitamins and minerals and things like that and then the the, the structure and the balance in your body will start to change over time you got to give it time it doesn't happen overnight all right you got to give it a little time but just be consistent with that all right um another thing you could do is drink more water clean alkaline water you know with the ph level above at least at least a 7.5 or above that can also help strengthen your digestive system as well because you have to have water to push the food through your digestive tract as well so yes adding the greens and anti-inflammatory diet is good but if there's not enough water to push that food through your digestive through your digestive tract as well then you know you could still not resolve all your issues because your body's dehydrated and it needs that water to push that food through your digestive tract all right so you know, um, and there's two kinds of anti-inflammatory diets. I always tell people, you know, it's not one type of anti-inflammatory diet. There's a list of, of foods that are anti-inflammatory foods. You know, you can do plant-based foods. You can do, pet, you can do a pescatarian diet or Mediterranean. They're basically the same thing. But any food that has anti-inflammatory properties in it are usually your seafoods, your plant-based foods, you know, things like that. They help keep your inflammation levels down and they fight the inflammation in that gut and in your uh, stomach lining so you can get that inflammation up out of your body and out of your gut, right? That, you know, if you make those adjustments, that will get you on the right track to strengthening your digestive system, you know, where you can start getting some relief from the bloating, you know, the constipation, the nausea, you know, the discomfort, the pain and discomfort in your belly, you know, and uh, those IBS issues, all right? So hopefully I broke that down for you where it made sense. Uh, comment below if you got any questions. I'll be sure and respond to the ones that I see. And like I said at the beginning of this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you can get notified when I upload more content to the channel. And uh, if you want to check out some of my other videos, I got some more. I got some other good videos in the description section, you know, about how to diet, how to exercise with fibromyalgia arthritis, uh, how to relieve stress. You know, so uh, just scroll down to the description section and, and uh, check out some of my other videos as well. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day.